Hello and welcome to Grace Talk, a weekly podcast with Dale Campbell, lead pastor of Grace Fellowship Church in London, Kentucky. Grace Talk features casual conversations and practical insights into the Word of God. Now, get ready to listen, learn, and grow. Welcome to Grace Talk. This is Pastor Dale here at Grace Fellowship in London, Kentucky. This is a beautiful day here in February. I'm telling you, every day with the Lord is just a wonderful, wonderful day. I uh, have been getting out early, taking uh, a walk just before I come into the office, and the last two mornings, it's been in the 30s here, frosty and cold, but it's been a beautiful walk, and the moon has just been absolutely gorgeous of the morning. And so I'm telling you, you know, the Bible says this is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is giving us some wonderful days here in February of 2023. We are in a theme and a new series here at Grace Fellowship called Greater Things, and our text is found in John 14, verse 12. Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Some of the translations actually say greater things than these he will do because I go to my Father. But I spent about four weeks, if you've been following our podcast or following our uh, services that are archived, we spent about four weeks talking about why we can expect the greater things coming upon our life that Jesus was speaking of. And it really gets down to this, the reason why we are qualified to receive the uh, greater things that Jesus talked about is because of the new creation, the new birth. We are born again people. We are brand new creatures. According to 1 Corinthians, we are brand new creations in Christ Jesus. And because of that, we expect greater things to begin to take place in our life. Uh, when we get born again, it sets us up to be able to receive the life that God intended for us to have, and it's a wonderful life. Jesus said it like this in John 10, 10. He said, there is a thief, and the thief comes for no other reason but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, the New Living Translation said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And so this new creation life is the greater life. Now, I talked about, if you've uh, listened to the sermon that I did this past Sunday, uh, I talked about how there's a lot of people who just don't think that the Christian life is a greater life. They will agree that it's a greater life once we get to heaven, but because of religious teaching and ideology, there's a lot of people who believe God doesn't really get involved in our lives here to give us the greater life. In fact, sometimes they believe God sends bad things upon his children, and they will argue things about uh, it's spiritual to be poor. Uh, Jesus supposedly was poor, the disciples were poor, and if you go listen to my message on Sunday in the archives, you'll find out Jesus really wasn't poor till he became poor with our poverty. I mean, he had a treasure that took care of his ministerial money. Um, he, uh, he had, uh, when he was born, a lot of times people want to say, well, he was born in a stable because he was poor. No, he was born in a stable because there was no room in the inn. They could have afforded to get a room, but there was no space, so they had to find other means. Uh, and there's a lot of other things. They gambled for his clothes. I don't think you gamble for the garments of a homeless beggar. So uh, another one, you know, the disciples supposedly did without all the time. But Jesus asked them in Luke twenty two thirty five. 35, he said to them, when I sent you out uh, to travel with no money bag, no traveling bag, no sandals, did you lack anything? And their response simply was, no, nothing, not a thing. So they did not lack. They had their needs supplied. Same thing with the Apostle Paul. People want to talk about, you know, that Paul uh, did without. Well, Paul said, I've learned how to be content in every circumstance. I know what it's like to go through seasons of lack, but I also know what it's like to go through seasons of plenty. And uh, you'll know uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 28, you get down to the end of the chapter, uh, the Bible says Paul lived for two years in his own rented house. 
And he welcomed people to come visit, and they came by, and um, he ministered to them daily, and he explained the things of the kingdom to them. So Paul had enough resources that he was able to pay for his own home for two years there, and uh, he was able to entertain groups. Must have been large enough to bring groups in and to entertain them, uh, giving them the ministry of the gospel. So I told the church on Sunday, nobody ever starved to death working for the Lord that I found in Scripture. You know, uh, David the psalmist said, I have, I've uh, never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So as the seed of God, the children of God, we are not beggars. Our life, when we get saved, should begin to move toward being the greater life that God has intended for us. So whatever I could do before I got saved, I believe with God's wisdom and God's strength, I can be better at it once I get saved. So even putting that in practical terms, if you're a salesman, believe for God to help you to sell, to, to sell better. Uh, if you are a, a carpenter or a builder, believe that God's going to give you creativity to build better. If you're a physician, a doctor, believe that God's going to give you insight to be able to do better with your patients. Whatever you're involved in, Believe for the abundant life that Jesus talked about, so it's going to be a greater life. Praise the Lord. Uh, this new creation life sets us on the right course. Paul talked about uh, in his letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course, and I've kept the faith. Notice he says, I finished my course. God has a course set for every person that will get into his plan for their life. And a course simply figuratively is the course of life. But it's also used in Scripture like a, a race course or a course that is set for a race to be run. Paul talked about finishing the race as well. And so it's very important that you don't try to run somebody else's race or get on to somebody else's planned course. Know that God has a plan for your life and your success, the greater thing life, is going to be contingent upon you getting in his course and staying on that course until the end. There's a beautiful scripture. I talked about it on Sunday, Ephesians 2.10. It says, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, notice here he's talking about our new birth, our life. We are his workmanship cre created in Christ Jesus. So really a better word there would be recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works because until we have the new birth, the recreation life, we just simply call it getting saved. Until we have that in our life, we're still by nature completely attached to Adam and everything that was connected to him as our natural earthly father. But Jesus comes and gives us or offers to us the new birth so that our life is recreated. And uh, I love how the Amplified says this. It's one of my favorite passages. Listen to it. In the Amplified, it says we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed and renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking the paths that he set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. See, the, re the new creation resets my life course. So that now I'm back on track uh, and now a candidate to receive the plan or the path that God established before I was ever born. You know, God spoke of Jeremiah. He said, before you were ever in, the, in your mother's womb, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew about you. I knew what you were going to be. I knew what you could be. I knew what I wanted to put in you. I set a course out for your life, Jeremiah. Well, it's not just Jeremiah. It's for every single one of us. Somewhere back in time, God thought about me. God thought about you. And he put a course together for our life. But, of course, 
when we're born, we're born after the nature of Adam, and that means we're not on God's course. But when we get saved or born again, it resets that course and brings us back to a place where we can get back in alignment. I can reconnect with God's original plan for my life. And that passage there in Ephesians says these are things that God ordained beforehand. He preordained, prearranged things for my life. And when I get saved, it's the starting place for me to reconnect with that prearranged plan that God has for me. Now, that's just the beginning of it, uh, but it at least sets me into the right direction. It, it puts me going in the right direction. Now, once I'm saved and I've received Christ and I am a new creation person, now I have to cooperate every single day with God's direction for my life. Uh, we say this in our church a whole lot here, and that is uh, cooperation required. So God doesn't just rain it down on you and force it to happen. It's got to be with your cooperation by having faith for it, by acting on that faith, by obeying what he tells you to do, obeying when he tells you not to do something, following his lead, following his voice. That's what it's all about. So uh, I talked a little bit on Sunday. I'm not going to get into that today on the podcast very much, but on defining moments. God sets us up with these moments where we have to make a, a, a decision. It's a time when uh, we come to a, a pivotal decision or a crossroads or a fork in the road, and it's a time when we must react to go one direction or another. God sets that up. We saw it in Elisha's life when Elijah came by and threw his cloak on him. And, I mean, Elisha thought it was going to be just any other day plowing behind the oxen. But in one moment's time, something happened that offered a course change. And so, of course, he took the course change, barbecued the oxen, and uh, by the end of the story, he is known as the double portion prophet. But it all came about as he cooperated with God's defining moment. Uh, I love the story of Ruth. Ruth was out there gleaning in a field because they didn't have anything. She was taking care of her mother-in-law, and she was going into the fields of a businessman by the name of Boaz. And, of course, God had instructed his people to leave things behind in the field for the poor so they could come in and gather around the edges of the field. Ruth was doing that, and she had no idea Boaz was watching her. And uh, Boaz was watching, and uh, later on, it is, it is a defining moment. It is a setup. Boaz and Ruth will get together. Uh, they're part of the genealogy of Christ. But I thought about this very often. Ruth got out there, went out there just like any other day, gleaning from the field to have some food to eat. Uh, she had no idea she was being watched. And I shared this on Sunday. You don't know when you're being watched by the person who holds the key to the next phase of your journey. And that's why when we go to work in the morning, we always go obeying what Paul told the Colossians. Do whatever you're doing, whatever work you're doing. Do it as doing it unto the Lord because the Lord is the one who really is going to reward you. And the Bible also says promotion comes to the Lord. He's looking to the north, to the south. He's looking in all directions to see who he can promote. But the Bible says your promotion doesn't come from natural sources. It comes of the Lord. Well, as it's coming from the Lord, he sets people up that you're going to encounter people that have the ability to promote you, people who have the ability to take you forward. And if you're not doing things uh, in a way of integrity or doing things right, uh, you'll miss it. You'll miss it. So just always know that there could be an eye on you today, someone God has set in your path to promote you, and you don't want to mess up by doing things uh, in a way that's not uh, performance enough to receive promotion. All right. So the list goes on and on. And I talked about some of the personal defining moments in my life, uh, that just things happen quickly. And suddenly that led me to different places in ministry, 
led me to different spiritual experiences and then led me into the place that I met my wife. And what I found is every defining moment that you follow God in will lead to another defining moment down the road. And each one is a step-by-step, phase-by-phase promotion of the Lord. So with all that being said, uh, it's the greater life that God's leading us to, but we have to cooperate with his leadings and his flow in order to get there. But if we will follow him, he will always help us to get there. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to go back and listen to the entire archived message. They're out there on different podcast platforms. We have one that is for our Sunday morning services, one that's for our Wednesday evening teachings. Uh, You can find us on YouTube. You can also uh, go back on the Facebook archives. You can check out the Grace Fellowship app. You can look for uh, the Grace Fellowship website at www.graceforyou.com. We've put it out there, made it as easy as we possibly can, but the message on this subject is out there for it's in it's in its entirety and if you're going to one of these platforms and don't know how to search just search for grace fellowship london kentucky you'll find us i hope you have a great day god bless you we'll be back next week thank you for listening to grace talk with pastor dale campbell for questions or comments regarding today's show email us at grace talk at grace to learn more about grace fellowship church visit www.graceforyou.com. Have a blessed week, and remember, the Word of God is powerful seed, capable of producing an abundant harvest in the lives of those willing to listen, learn, and grow.